I want to start by saying that this is a very collaborative effort. It's, um, it was spearheaded by uh, United for News. United for News is a project of Internews in collaboration with the World Economic Forum. And we um, had, it's a multi-stakeholder coalition. A very basic overview of um, Reflect Reality. We start with the problem showing and that as, as I said, this is very much based on the, the data, the, the research conducted by the Global Media Monitoring Project. Then we have a section on the challenges. Then we make the case, provide the arguments for why it's really important for businesses, why it's really important for journalism, society, and in general, how it's important to source women. Then the core part of the research is the strategy section. It's a very large and detailed section that can that provide tips and tools for implementing it within newsrooms and for journalism trainers, but also it can be, the, the strategies can be implemented by individuals working within newsrooms. Then we have the pilot project sections that provide key learnings and the practical experiences of these four projects that we had, pilot projects. And then the resource, sec resource section is a section where you find an expert, a creation of expert databases of female experts, of female voices, and also a template of the tracking mechanism that helps us start the development of this project. Project. We started the problem, and as I was saying, this very much comes, it was an inspiration, was the GMMP large and um, long time running research that they have conducted all over the world, showing that women's voices are severely missing in the news. We only have 19% of expert sources globally, it's an average, but it varies slightly from place to place. So if we look at the contrary, we have 81% of male voices as experts in the news. That varies depending on the section, depending on the subject, but women are 16% of political and government related news. And the GMMP also tracks the, the different types of roles that women appear, how they appear in the news. And the, the highest number of appearances are in personal experience um, role. Reflect Reality research makes the case of why it's really important for different, across society from different aspects why it's good for journalism to increase women expert knowledge in, represented in the news. It builds trust and that, that's really important particularly at a time that media is uh, rated really low in terms of uh, trust. I'll go through this in a little more detail as we go through the sections. It's also good for business because there is an entire section of the audience that has, been, has not been tapped into and can help this, uh, newsrooms particularly as they look for more revenue to actually grow their audiences and grow engagement. And it's also good for society. It's important to have role models for girls. People reflected in the news with, um, that are women with expert knowledge. So girls and women can see a roadmap to success and also to problems they face. A very um, interesting section of the resource is also the challenges because as we, we anticipated, um, you know, gender biases, that not having time or the effort that it takes to source women, experts, or at least the perception that those are challenges. But in doing the research, we actually realized that's a very complex um, area, that there's supply side and there's demand side challenges. And so we have this entire section with Q and A's and testimonies of people working from different aspects and it's really global, showing that actually there are other challenges, for example, cultural constraints of women not being in particular settings being perceived as the ones who should be speaking or should be speaking from the point of view of expert knowledge. So the, the, this section is really informative and interesting and I encourage everybody to take a look. So the core section of Reflect Reality is the strategies. So the, the strategies that we provide, they are divided in four different categories. They are the planning and analysis. So everything that should be done in advance to starting a project for um, increasing women expert sourcing. Then the tracking mechanism, which is a really core part of it, it's giving both a baseline of where you where a particular news room is in, in the gender disparity in sourcing, but also will help you provide target, will help provide awareness, will help raise conversations within the newsroom and where to go from there. There is the process of ensuring that staff buy in and that they're going to be involved in the work, they're going to be engaged also the process of involving, I would say, men and women, it's a very important one. And then the cultivation of sources. How do you grow your databases of female experts? How do you make people more comfortable, women more comfortable providing interviews, like I said before? The planning and analysis section provides an overview of this, the initial stages. It can be done in different ways to the extent that 
the newsroom or the individuals working on it have the capacity to do it. There are different models. It, it is a really initial, the, the important part of it. Um, involve diverse staff so that they can provide not only perspectives on the dynamics of it, but also they can provide ideas about stereotyping. It, it's a discussion that becomes more rich when it's not only, for example, only women involved, but you have women and men, you have from different people from different backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, and so on. Another key part of it that we suggest is recruit champions, get people that really care about gender and diversity on the staff. The other advice we give is set achievable goals so that you don't go from, if you, in your benchmark exercise, you realize that it's a really severe lack of women's voices, you don't expect to do to go from there to 50 percent for like actual parity but there's a more incremental way of implementing it so that people don't get frustrated if they don't see the results right away so that there there is a more um, tangible way of um, creating motivation and seeing the results some of the best practices we see count what you can control so they do not um, focus on tracking sources that are celebrities for example or politicians because those are not sources they can control they have to cover a story and so that that gender is not going to be something they they could change and so they focus on, on the sources on counting the sources that are within their ability to choose share the results as i was saying be transparent with the newsroom regularly share the tracking results so that the staff can see where they are, what they have been able to achieve, and that keeps motivation as well. Inspire friendly competition by sharing the results within, um, not only within teams, but within the organization, so that there is a measurement against the peers, against the different teams. Use the tracking to spark conversation. Use the results to engage the staff and individual journalists in conversations about their workflow, the process they use to identify sources. And I would say this could even go beyond and to really discuss diversity in general. Promote self-tracking. Tracking has the greatest impact when news teams and individual journalists track, uh, track their content. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an effort within the team only, but also creating awareness for the journalist himself or herself to, to see how they are doing. Pilot project section has the two experiences of the Toronto Star, as I said, in the Globe and Mail in Canada. We have our own project in, in in Iraq, Our Voices is a three-year project that tackles a, a range of different issues of women's empowerment, but it's very strong on the creating a database. They have run a gender analysis, and they also have been training women to both the journalists, but also sources. Then we have Reflect Reality with the Earth Journalism Network. They, it's, a, it's a network of environmental journalists all over the world. It's also a project of Inter News. Some of the key learnings that the pilot projects gave us is that, as I said, tracking is really critical. It's what gives awareness, it's what gives you a baseline for implementation. Count only what you can control. Do not track sources that you have no ability to change. Be strategic when announcing the initiative within the newsroom. As I said, try to make it a not a punitive effort, but a collaborative, positive, motivating, um, engaging, Leadership is key, so they have to give their backing, they have to send a message that this is really important, but they also, you need to build momentum from the bottom. So it's really the participation of the news producers and the journalists that are gonna make this happen. Also uh, a key part of it, and that goes in the business uh, section of the strategies is really industry needs to promote women. They need to put women at the front of their uh, public facing efforts and they need to give media training to women. That's really key. And also leverage the entire newsroom. As I said, use the social media department, involve other um, people that are in different desks and different sections of the organization. Two quotes that I find really simple but interesting and key to this, the Globe and Mail, I wanted to do something the entire newsroom could participate in. So it did create engagement for people across teams and the next one from the Toronto Star, you achieve what you measure. So there's no way to go beyond any effort here without knowing what you're dealing with, the extent of the problem.